Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Blog Dance. Office Blog Caden. Okay, here we are on Sports Edition. Yeah. Office Blog Dance Sports Edition, where we cover all sports. You name it, we'll do it. Yes. Pretty much. Golf let's today. Let's a little bit out there. We're going to touch on the golf. This is a big story that's coming from um, from the golf world. It, it came yesterday, this. Um, and when okay. I read it, I was like, nah, that can't be right. So I went into it. So I like went into the, 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 uh, the research of it. Yeah. And it turns out it was, it was happening. So what's happened is... I know you're not very big into golf, are you? No. Right, so I, I, I watch quite a lot of golf. Um, and I used to go, I played golf a little bit, but I used to go and watch golf when I lived in the Middle East. I used to go to the uh, HSBC, got well looked after there by the by the crew, and uh, met quite a lot of the golfers. I've been yeah. to a golf tournament. You have? I took you to a yeah. golf tournament to the HSBC. Well, yeah. you've met you've met people like uh, Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah. So uh, people like that. So you had a good time. You met Tiger Woods. Did I? Yeah. You got the, you got a hat, got it upstairs, you got it signed by all the golfers when we were in the I know, the I was like right at the front watching Mako yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, like that, but yeah. I never met him. So the PGA, when the PGA was going, it's sort of like, um, just the last couple of years, or last year or so, LIV's come along, live, LIV, however you, however you call it, and it's become a massive competitor to the PGA. So the fact is the PGA stopped players playing on the PGA that defected to the live t uh, tour. So it's kind of like, uh, it's become like a little bit of a massive rivalry. I think they were suing each other for a lot of money as well. I don't know, it was a massive lawsuit going on uh, mm. between, the, between the two, between the two um, tours. And to, to cut it short, what happened was they, that live, attracted a lot of people into their tour, the top players, like, you know, Brooks Kopka, people like that, where they were paying them massive money. And everyone was sort of like enticed by it. They were all saying, all right, we'll go. So I think Phil Mickelson, they all went over into the, um, into the live tour. People like, there was a lot of people that stayed loyal to the PGA, like uh, Tiger Woods, uh, Rory. Yeah. People that stayed real loyal to the PGA. And they offered, I think they offered Tiger Woods the equivalent of about 100, I think, sorry, I think it was a billion dollars or 700 million pounds, something like that. And they offered Rory something like 400 million pounds yeah. to play in the, in the live. And they both turned it down. How much would you get in the PGA tour? Like not as much as that. that. They still get a lot of money, but not yeah. as nowhere near what the money what live thrown around, yeah. sort of thing. I was talking to one of the golfers that I know. And I said, why don't you get involved in this live thing? And he went, I'm going to. He said, I can earn very, very good money. And he's, he's a retired golfer. So I think but he's thinking about coming back into it. He's still young. Yeah. Thinking about coming back into it so he can earn decent money with the live. But now what's happened, they've merged. But it was all very secretive. No one seemed to know about it. So after all that as well, they've merged together after they're trying to sue each other. Yeah, I don't know what, I, I, to be fair, I've read a little bit about it, but I've not gone deep into it as yet because I thought I'll get more stories as it comes out in the next few days. Yeah. So this only after this only broke yesterday and the golfers only found out, the PGA golfers have found out by letter, apparently. People might let us know in the comments a different thing. I don't know how many people out there into the golf sort of thing. This might be a video that's only watched by a few. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, we want to try and cover every sport we can. We're a proper sports channel here. So we're going to touch into this. Um, this is the golf. This is the golf channel, Golf Today channel. Um, so let's uh, let's see what they're saying. Mm. Yeah. Brian Lavner oh, you know now you joins know. us here on in. Golf Today. George Sam, <laughs> well, just Damon are. Hack here with you. Lav, we just went through the timeline. Your reaction to the news and everything that's unfolded now over the past couple of years. I mean, guys, it's just uh, amazing about face for the PGA Tour with both legacy and leverage uh, seeming to, to carry the day. I think I'm struck most by how secretive this deal was. I mean, no player I've talked to, no agent I've talked to on either side knew that this was going down. And so that is, is certainly striking on this day. I also think about... It's one of the things that sort of like got me a little bit when I, when I heard this yesterday, that some of the agents that I know, um, they, they were talking in general about, like, no one's even... No one had a clue this was going to happen. Yeah. But all of a sudden, it's one of the massive things that's ever happened in golf. Is that like a, a reasoning they've kept it quiet, though? Like, were people, like, not have signed for a living that are, like... I guess what, what might have happened is if, they, if players might have found out about it, there might have been a bit of a, um, a pushback. Yeah. So I think they probably didn't want that. There's probably so much money involved um, to take golf to the next level. Yeah. This will make golf a massive major, sort of, like, uh, give, give it a massive boost anyway, and it'll stop the arguments going on. One of the things that we're talking about is that you have the Ryder Cup, which is uh, the USA against Europe, and they were saying like a lot of people who were playing with Live weren't they weren't going to let them play in the Ryder Cup, and things like that, where you kind of then the, the PGA losing out on or the Ryder Cup especially as well, and certain certain majors losing out on the best golfers in the world. Yeah, but it's I don't know, it's just a, it's one of these major news stories. It's happened where it's all in like, but I feel bad for the, some of the 
the players of a PGA who are loyal to the PGA, unless they're getting rewarded in some kind of way for a loyalty bonus, mm. then it's not really fair. But let's see what they're going to say. Oh, the future and fortunes that could be uh, infused here with, with PGA Tour players. Like we're talking billions of dollars, plural. Um, and I think it'll eventually uh, be good for golf fans, but in the short term, um, there's just going to be so much anger. There's going to be so much mistrust among PJ Tour players and uh, the tour leadership just being kind of misled over the past year and what the direction of the PJ Tour was going to look like. Ryan, you talk about short term anger. Are you hearing at all from PJ Tour members short term <laughs> joy? elation glad about what's coming down the road for professional golf haven't heard that yet uh hmm. i'm sure they will in due course and, and look the player meeting at 4 p.m eastern time uh, i'm sure jay monahan and the rest of the pg tour leadership is going to do a uh, very good job of laying out what the future of the pj tour looks like and right now guys we, i think it's important to remember we just have the framework of this agreement we don't have all the details about what it's going to look like. I, I do anticipate if uh, Jay Monahan and the other tour leaders don't have at least a semblance of what that framework and uh, what those details are going to look like in the future, uh, I think that's only going to grow the level of resentment, bitterness, mistrust, anger uh, that they're feeling. Again, I think, I think long-term, PGA Tour players are going to benefit significantly from this, as I do think golf fans uh, right now, the lack of communication for what was supposed to be a player-run organization uh, is is kind of striking at the moment. Ryan, I talked with a couple players last year on the PGA Tour, and this was, call it, July of 22, and they thought long-term the resolution ultimately would be a merger, that that would be the best tactical stance for the PGA Tour to take. And you're out there week to week, and you talk with players or in practice rounds or inside the ropes. And it was kind of a mixed bag of if they wanted the PGA Tour to sync up with Liv or if they wanted to take that really hard-line stance where Liv is a comp competing entity that we want nothing to do with and we're going to try and um, ensure that their viability is not predicated around our players playing on both tours. What do you think the overall public sentiment or the overall sentiment will be among PGA Tour players? If you said one side positive, one side negative, would you go 50-50, 75-25? Uh, how would you square it? Well, I think you have to break it into, into certain sectors. I think PGA Tour players have benefited massively from this division in the game. I think that's indisputable at, at this point. Obviously, the live players with their guaranteed contracts uh, were paid handsomely, but so is the PGA Tour players. They've rolled out this designated event model uh, they have they're, they're richer than they ever have been in their PJ Tour careers. What that's going to look like in, in the future, you would think, with the PIF now in investment in the in the PJ Tour model and this new for-profit entity, is going to just increase that uh, exponentially. So, what is interesting to me is 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 trying to understand why the PJ Tour would do this at this moment. I think by that's what I was thinking. Why, why do it now? They've gone through everything, but why keep it so secretive as well? I mean, I get, I get the bigger picture. Golf kind of probably needs to be one mm. and be sort of like controlled by public investment fund, which they've got a lot of money. They're on the pushing that through. Saudi Arabia seems to be involved in getting bigger and bigger involved in sports as things go on. Yeah. You know, when you look at some of the some of the teams they're buying and where they position themselves for boxing and certain events, UFC yeah, yeah, is getting big in the Middle East now. And you're getting a lot of things that are moving out to the Middle East for um, for sports wise. And Saudi seems to be the forefront in pushing their money into the into the. You, you only look at their, their football league. They've got um, yeah. They've got Ronaldo over there. They've just signed Benzema. Benzema. Kante, uh, Kante, and uh, they're after uh, the Zaha. Do you know what I looked at today as well? They're after uh, Ilkay Gundogan. Ilkay Gundogan. People are they're gonna they're gonna throw major money at, and that's the only way you're gonna attract players into that kind of league. Yeah. Because for us, it's like a bang average league. It's not. It's like uh, it's like trying to set up an NFL league. Uh, in, in Scotland, in, in, in Scot yeah, or whherever, <laughs> try to send NFL league in Saudi Arabia. Who are you going to go for? You're going to go for your people who are who are you know the top quarterbacks, but coming to the end of the career. Yeah, yeah. So I think or the top receivers who are just coming to the end, who just want a nice. You, you want the big name, so you'll get Tom Brady to go over there. Yeah. You know, although he's retired, you'll bring him out of retirement, pay him like mega millions. You know, I mean, big big money to get him in there. So it's like, but he'll be he'll be the face of it. Yeah. The, the season Ronaldo joined 
uh, the Saudi Arabian League, this like the, the viewers of the Saudi Arabian League yeah. is like tripled. Yeah, it goes like crazy. That. It goes crazy, and you open it up to the world. Yeah. So I think because they've got that kind of investment and that kind of power that they can do it. So I think with all the petrol money they've got. But when you look at what they're doing here with the golf, it, it probably will be a big thing overall to get it to get it under one umbrella. But it just feels like to me a little bit of a stab in the back to uh, to the PGA golfers that have stayed loyal to the PGA. Who do you reckon would have wanted this merge to happen more though? Probably the PGA. Do you reckon more money? But do you not reckon like live? too many too many players would da- too many players were going over to live and getting paid handsomely, and like you said there, there was the new pro. But then why pro- would live do it? Because they wanted to be the new sort of like face of golf. They, they, it was there. Are they, is, they, it, is the name going to change? It could they'd probably have to change. It wouldn't have been, I don't know, PGA. If, if I say to you PGA, everyone associate with golf, don't they? Yeah. I know it's not like a... You said live, I wouldn't have a clue what you're on about. Because you weren't into it, so no. you've probably not been around golf no. for the last two or three years, sort of thing. So where it's been, that's where it's sort of like been founded and grown from. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting to see what happens in this in the next few days. Mm. Any measure, the designated event model on the PGA Tour has been a resounding success. I don't think... Uh, that is that is arguable at this point. You have uh, players who are happy, PJ Tour leadership. We've heard endlessly from them how happy they are. The, the ratings are up. I think fans are really enjoying seeing the best players together more often. And on the counter side, you had Live Golf, which is really struggling to gain traction in the U.S. They've got to shut off the rating system. I think they were validated somewhat with the performances by the Live players, the Masters, as well as Brooks kept winning the PJ Championship. But why now? For the PJ Tour, why would you make this decision now? If you're going down this separate path, and by all uh, accounts things seem to be going well, uh, you know, did did sponsors balk at at kind of hiking the prices for the purses? Um, are they fearful what would come out in discovery uh, in the antitrust lawsuit? Was the DOJ investigation somewhat worrying worrisome for them? That is the that's the outstanding question for me. Why now? Why would the PJ Tour reverse course? on June 6th, when by all accounts, the designated event model and the PJ Tour players are, are profiting as, as handsomely as they ever have. And Ryan, I think you have to follow the financials. How viable economically was that designated event model going forward? Was that a short-term blimp to be a counteraction to what Live Golf was doing? Or did they really think that Live Golf was a viable competitor for not just one, two, three, maybe five, ten years plus going forward? And if you were having a shortfall from what sponsors were willing to pay on the PGA Tour for purses to what you had then allocated for these designated events, reserves may have been a, a bit thinner than the general public thought for them to make a move that is this seismic going forward. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more, George. Uh, clearly, there was some sort of uh, blowback from, from sponsors. Are they not getting um, the, in, the return on investment that they want. I mean, the designated event model, That's it's twice as much as they would typically do, and you're still, uh, at least in 2024 and beyond, we're not going to be guaranteed to have those top players uh, play. Like this year, you have obviously the, the one tournament they can miss, and Roy McIlroy uh, is the lone, lone player uh, who is top 20 in the PIP who decided to miss more than one tournament. But there's still, at least moving forward, some question whether you're going to have all the stars going forward. We've already seen on the other side as well with, with Live Golf, they've kind of tightened the purse strings as well. They weren't doling out those 100, 150, rumored $200 million signing bonuses to players. Uh, they've had some of the cutbacks in terms of their expenditures on the Live side as well. And so that's why I, I do think once you get past this short-term anger, resentment, mistrust, I do see a benefit long-term in combining forces Uh, in making uh, what should be a very powerful kind of global world league uh, that I think would benefit not just the players, uh, but but golf fans and sports fans as well. Mm. I kind of agree with what you're saying there at the end. He's, um, he's, the way he's explaining that on the bigger picture, and they are, I wouldn't say they're running out of money, but they're probably restricting the kind of money they're pushing on bonuses, signing on bonuses for the players going over to live. But it's the same. It's the same sort of like. It looks to me like when you get these new countries that come into the sports world and they want to bit the action into their country. So we had it with China. So China wanted to do this sports league, like a football league. Yeah. So they come in and say, right, we're going to sell this football league. So what they did was they signed these players. Are, the, the the main one I can think of in my mind that kind of left the Premier League when he was at a young age was Oscar. Oscar. He was like twenty six years old. One of the top players in the Premier League decided to go over to China to play in the Chinese league. And they were, they were paying people ridiculous amounts of money. 
Some people were getting paid like nine, nine, nine hundred thousand, a million pound a week. Yeah. You know, to play over there. It was enticing. But you go into a bum league. It is a bum league. Yeah, yeah. You go into like, a, you know, probably the Chinese league is probably the equivalent of our third division, I would say. Right? Our yeah. third tier football. Right? And it's it's one of them where, and you look at it and you're getting players like Oscar going there for the, going, obviously going for the money, but yeah. getting paid handsomely while they're playing over here. He wasn't, on, a, he was he wasn't on nothing. He was probably that. 200 grand a week over here. No, I know. I get that. But um, after two, three years, the Chinese league crumbled. And they, it's they, crumbled. They, it's nothing. And because they can't play, they play, they they did it too much. Now Oscar didn't get paid for a long time. Correct. And then when you look, at, I don't know where he is now. I don't know if he's still playing in China. Yeah, I'm not I don't sure. know. He just disappeared off the off the face of the earth type thing. As far as a footballer goes, yeah. and it's the same as people like Ronaldo. They want to be the face of this, and people think going over to Saudi Arabia and getting paid all this kind of money, you're going to be the face of the new face of football at the end of your career. It's a pay packet, and I don't blame him for it. You know, Benzema's yeah, going yeah. over there. Still probably can play. Still could probably do it at the top level, Benzema. Um, but he's decided he's going to go and take a pay packet in Saudi and get paid millions and millions per season. And then I don't know, maybe 100 million a season he's probably getting. Uh, for, I don't, maybe more. I don't know what the package is. I'm and then sure just right retire with, you know, with the mega money in the bank. It's tax-free. You know, to do whatever they want to do. But I, I don't know. If, if Live Golf was signed up the way, same way, PGA may have jumped into this a little bit too soon. Mm-hmm. But it'd be interesting to see what the uh, what the outcome of it all. Well, Live Golf might have. I'm not not an expert on this, but like they might have like merged with the PGA Tour because um, obviously mainly because they weren't getting the traction that they probably wanted. Well, they were getting the players. A lot they of the top players were moving getting, over. Yeah, but you can get the same like you're getting the top players in Saudi Arabia moving over. It doesn't mean money. The viewers watch it as more. Well, that's what he was saying. It wasn't taking traction in in the USA. The USA is the biggest market for golf. Yeah. Don't know. So you're not getting the, if you're not getting the traction from the USA and, sort of like base, then you're not gonna it's not going to succeed. You've got to succeed in the USA for golf for it to be a, a major sport. And if you're not getting the traction, you're not going to make any more money. So they, they probably just lose the money if they're paying the They will be, loads. but they've got the money to throw at it. They've got that. It's, it's the private investment fund, the sort of public investment fund of Saudi Arabia. So they've got mega money. They've got yeah. billions and billions, trillions to throw at it. Still want to make profit though. But they want to, put, they want to get involved in other sports as well. They're trying to make it the sports capital of the world, which I'm not sure a lot of people won't go for because you can't take certain sports into the Middle East. Um, and, and take it away from the, the regular fan, the regular going fan. Mm. It's going to be hard for it. I know, I know the, the golf tours around the world, there's different places around the world that you take certain leagues and certain things that, you know, now will, will the made tournament, will it be the US Masters? Will it be the Masters? Is that what we call them still? Or will it, be, will it be a new tournament where it's played in Australia? And that's the new thing. Was like the live golf courses, were they the same, like... They were playing different courses. You weren't, they weren't playing any majors at like Augusta where the US Masters is based. Yeah. They know all the masters over here, which played another British. They play masters. around the USA and stuff. They yeah. play different places. Yeah, I don't know where they live. I'm not. I'm not too well up on live golf to see what it was where. You know the, the areas they were playing. Yeah. But it was. Um, but I think PGA have got. They've made a decision. I think they jumped in too soon, like he was saying. Yeah, it's an but interesting one, isn't it? Let's keep on and see what it is. But there you go. Every sports a winner on here. It's uh, it's yeah. our sports channel, so don't forget to subscribe as well. It does help us. And if you've got anything in the comments, we will be in the comments, and we'll uh, we'll get back to you. Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.